You wake up in the morning and make a cup of coffee. Head to the fridge and crack a couple eggs. Scramble them. Grab some bacon from your package container and throw it in the pan. It sizzles while you check your phone. A perfect breakfast in minutes. Ready to start the perfect day. The bacon you ate, delicious. Cooked with the exact amount of crispiness you'd like. But do you have any idea where it came from? It's in your fridge, but how did it get there? A store? A farm? A truck? A slaughterhouse? What if I told you it was all of the above? So much more, and yet so much worse. Every day, tens of thousands of pigs, amongst many other animals, are transported endless miles from farm to fatal. Packed into trucks like a three-layer cake, exposed to the elements, including summer's heat that radiates their metal container, all of which without ever being given an ounce of care along the way. Their final stop is a slaughterhouse, and that's where we begin. Over the last 18 years, the demand for pork has gone up 23%. And while government nutritionists recommend eating five to six and a half ounces of meat per day, Americans are averaging about 10. We're also seeing higher numbers of health issues caused by meat consumption, such as coronary heart disease and obesity. Along with health complications, the meat industry is contributing to environmental issues, such as 18% of greenhouse gases and 75% of deforestation in the Amazon. Not to mention that one pig factory produces the waste equivalent of a city of 12,000 people. And there are roughly 850 federally inspected slaughterhouses in the U.S. So it's no wonder that the amount of people on a plant-based diet is up 50%. In Vernon, California, just outside of downtown L.A., an organization called the Save Movement hosts what they call pig vigils every Wednesday outside of a slaughterhouse, Farmer John's. At these vigils, they stop trucks on their way into the slaughterhouse and give the pigs water as an act of compassion before their final sentencing. The pig vigil itself is one of 600 around the U.S. and Canada that happen weekly. We wanted to check it out for ourselves and simply talk to people and hear their thoughts on why they're doing this. This pig right here, the six-month-old baby pig, has a prolapsed colon right now. You can see it's, it's literally outside of its body. It's a, this is a normal thing. This happens all the time. Yeah, all the time. A lot of these pigs show up dead. Uh, they don't make the trip because they either have cancer or tumors. Uh, they're just, uh, the conditions are just too hard, either too cold or too, too hot for these animals, and they end up dying. So I think it's about 1.8 million um, animals every year, and just in the U.S. alone, uh, fail to make it to the slaughterhouse. They, they're di they die just in transport. We're not here to persuade people to go one way or the other. We just think everyone deserves to know what's really happening. And I don't think most people are really thinking about how their food gets on their plate. They're just thinking about how good it tastes and they're not caring about the conditions that these guys are going through to make that meal possible. From my sources inside, they do not get water inside of the slaughterhouse as well. This is it, this is a final act of mercy for these sweet, sentient beings that are only about four to six months old, so they're babies on top of it. A lot of times they just want to be pet. They can go up there to give them water, and they don't drink the water. They want to be pet on their snout. They want to experience love, they want to experience affection, and they're very receptive to that. Because they were never able to get close to their mothers in many cases, they use these things called gestational crates, which keep them from being able to get even close to their mothers while they're suckling. 
Some of these pigs have been traveling e either from the Midwest, like Nebraska, Idaho, Iowa. So they've gone days with no food, no water, living in their own feces. So we come here to spread them some love, some light, some compassion, give them some water, some comfort, uh, before they are, of course, sent off to slaughter. They're one of the few animals that don't actually sweat. They suffer heat exhaustion. And as you see, uh, you saw the prolapse colon earlier. That's because they, they're, so, they're so confined, the pressure, that their body just, you know, it just, it just comes out of them. It's like ridiculous. So we're just paying for unnecessary torture for no reason. I've been here many times. The first time I came here, I was like numb for like a week. But this is the reality. This is what happens every single day. And I feel like it's really important to be here for the animals. Just seeing that, like that's it. Their life's over in like 20 minutes from now. It's crazy, man. What's really cool is the LAPD is super nice and one of them became vegan because of this whole thing. And I got my son here for the first time. And that portrait mural over there is a fuck, it's a ton of bullshit. It's like they're playing with the, the farmers and stuff, but yet they're in these disgusting cages and it smells like they're in their own feces and they're, they're going into these places and they're getting slaughtered and kicked around like they're, like they're nothing. When they come by, all you have is just to give them some water. You can't feed them anything and you can't show them love for any longer than you actually have, which I think is sad. Sorry, dude. Of course, we are also here as a community to stand strong, stand tall, um, you know, and just keep growing as a community of activists. So what we're trying to do is get more vegans to actually become activists because we want to come here and get this content on our social medias and spread out to the world as much as possible. And by having a movement like this, they're inspiring more young people to become activists. When I see these pigs in the trucks, it makes me feel like really sad because I know that they're about to be killed and how they feel our emotions and how they're probably wondering like what's going on, how they went without food and water and they're going to be slaughtered. This might be our biggest group yet and I think it was just people wanting to come out and show support and show that they're here for these pigs and they're here to have their voices heard and they want this to stop. They want this practice to stop. They want these animals to stop being hurt. There you go, bud. I like to bring people here who aren't vegan or vegetarian because if you can't leave this without becoming one or the other, then you have no heart. Because this is the real, this is, this is where everything, this is the reality that happens every day. A lot of people have never seen this before, ever. And it's a wake-up call when you're here and it's very powerful. As you can see, there's a lot of people here. A lot of people who care and try to help these animals because uh, eating these animals kills us. Not only kills us, but it kills the whole planet. It kills our environment. It's the leading cause of forest deforestation, ocean dead zones, species extinction. So we're destroying everything to eat an animal for five minutes. That doesn't make any sense. It's not justifiable. They will not leave here alive and they will not leave here whole. And they will, they will be packaged up, put on grocery store shelves to the point where they're not recognizable. And people will eat them mindlessly without knowing that they had, they had a face. They had eyes like ours. They had souls, they had feelings. They're smarter than our dogs and cats, and they deserve better. People would be appalled if I said, eat your dog, or there's like a dog slaughterhouse at the corner. We would shut that down immediately in this country. This is one slaughterhouse uh, that is very close to LA, very close to downtown LA. It's in our backyard, but this is only one. And there are slaughterhouses all over the world 56 billion animals are killed per year for food, for human consumption. And you cannot kill any animal humanely that does not want to die. Humane meat is a lie. We then spoke with a former employee of the slaughterhouse who started attending the vigils while working there. He eventually quit working at Farmer John's and quit eating pork as well. I've worked here four years. When I first started, I started in the, on the kill floor. In the kill floor, we would first, uh, you know, we would shoot the pigs in the back of the head like with a with an air gun, and then went to shocking, and now they upgraded to uh, what you call a gas chamber, which to me is like a a torture. It's horrible in there. 
It's horrible, very horrible. Hearing this, the pig scream and, and crying like, like a human. It gets to your head after a while. I seen blood piled up to maybe like two inches on the floor, frozen for months. A lot of people stop eating pork from here. Like, especially when the holidays come in, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, everybody wants that little ham and they're thinking it's, it's fresh cut. It's a lie. I, that cut is like two to three years old. It's been on storage. The packages of ham, bacon and everything, when you see a little bit of water on it, it's expired product, don't even touch it. Any air bubbles, no good. It's so easy to find out where your food comes from and how it's made. You know, it's just the fact that people are not really wanting to see the reality of it. They just want to get it served to them on a plate. It's crazy because when you talk about veganism and stuff like that, people get so like scared by that word because it makes them start thinking inside themselves because it's a really selfless act to not eat animals or wear animals, you know? The reason this is important is because uh, we don't need to eat animals for us to survive as a human species. So why are we continuing to pay for these innocent angels to, that have never done anything wrong to us uh, to, to suffer a life of, not even a life, it's a living hell for these guys. They're six months old, they're babies, um, and um, they deserve the right to live just like you and I, or just like your dog or cat at home. So imagine if these were just puppies or kittens. What's the difference? It's 2019, we have vegan options for every single thing. You can get vegan bacon, you can get vegan ham, you can get you know anything. So why uh, continue paying for this unnecessary death when we don't have to? My son's never had meat, any of that stuff. He's completely healthy, he's 16 years old. And I feel like people are more conscious now in this social media and everything, it's just, it's so easy to find alternatives. I lost 60 pounds on a plant-based diet. I'm healthier. I don't, uh, you know, support animal cruelty, and it's more sustainable for the environment. It's time for our species to evolve. It's hurting our planet. It's hurting the animals. We're hurting ourselves. We're in a more conscious society now, with vegan being trendy, which I think is the best trend ever. For me, my approach is teachy, not preachy. I like people to like. I like to lead by example and kind of educate people through my social media and inspire them. You know, instead of like, don't do this. It's like. It's a, it's a fine line between being preachy and educating people about this movement. All animals are equal. They all feel pain. They all feel happiness. They all feel joy. You know, so we can't treat one animal like we love them, like the dog, the cat, and then treat the pig and the cow like they're just objects and, you know, torture them, abuse them, exploit them, and slaughter them like they're objects. They're actually living animals. Every single time that you eat a piece of meat, that was a living being that you paid to get killed. And by us coming here and getting the footage of these pigs at six months old about to go for slaughter and show the look in their eyes, the pain that they feel, the fear, people can start making the connection that they don't need to eat bacon. There's a vegan option. They don't need to eat burgers. There's a vegan option. If you are in the Los Angeles area, we do hold vigils here. Uh, we also have vigils in other cities as well. So find your SAVE group that's nearest to you by going to thesavemovement.org. So you should come to the pig vigil because if you do, you can really help support the pigs and even though it's very sad, you're being able to show love and do as much as you can even though you can tell how sad they are and you can tell they really don't want to be killed because nobody wants to be killed but it's very important that you show your support.